So I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit shocked. I assumed that we were getting a campaign trailer for Modern Warfare 3 today because it comes out tomorrow. And speaking of which, if you're not already subscribed to the channel and have notifications on, it's a great time to do so because tomorrow, right when the campaign goes live at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am going to be live streaming the entire campaign all on the channel, one straight playthrough. So if you want to join, check it out. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, have notifications on. It'll be live tomorrow. So get excited for that. But as far as today goes, they didn't put out a trailer, but they did put out a blog post and it had some information that you're going to want to know before you play the campaign, just some things to kind of get you ready for it. But on top of that, I'm going to include some information of my own regarding the characters of the campaign. If you haven't watched my video, I did a full summary of the Modern Warfare story so far. But in this one, I'm just going to give you the brief snippets of the main characters of the game and where they were at the end of the Modern Warfare story, because as you're going to find out in a minute, the campaign for Modern Warfare 3 picks up right at the end of the Modern Warfare 2 story. So I'm going to give you kind of where those characters are now and you'll, you'll know going into the launch tomorrow. So that's what this video is about. But first, let me give you the gameplay details. So the first thing that we have here is just a brief overview of the campaign. The first thing that they state is that it is a direct sequel to Modern Warfare 2. In other words, it takes place right after the end of the story. And we'll dive into that more when we dive into some individual characters and the story things that you need to know before you play the campaign. The second thing that we're going to go over is the open combat missions. Those sound interesting. There's a couple things that you're going to want to know about how those actually work and what you can expect from those missions. And and then finally, the commission completion awards. These are the things that are going to be applied to your account upon beating each individual mission within the campaign. So let's start there with the campaign rewards. There's a bit more information that you're probably going to want to know for this one. But first off, we have the operators, Corso, Pathfinder, Jabber, Doc. There's a classified weapon blueprint. On top of that, there's some calling cards called the Toxic Drip, Rhapsody, Gilly Guy, and finally, Breather. Now, we also have the entire complete mission set for the entire campaign that was given out. So minor spoilers here, but it doesn't give away anything completely. So it starts off with Operation 627. This is the one that we saw in the original campaign teaser. Then we have Precious Cargo, followed by Reactor, Payload, Deep Cover, Passenger. That one's not available. So I think that's going to be a classified blueprint. And as far as that one goes, I have a feeling that that is going to be no Russian 2.0. So that's about halfway through the campaign. After this, like we just talked about with the plane crashing, no Russian 2.0, the next mission is called Crash Site, Flashpoint, Oligarch, High Rise, Frozen Tundra, Gora Dam, Danger Close, and finally Trojan Horse. I find it interesting that the mission set goes deep cover and then passenger. That's very similar to the original Modern Warfare 2, where you had the deep cover agent actually go in and do the no Russian mission. But I don't know. That's just predictions. I can't wait to see what that's all about. So then we have the information on the open combat missions and how these are actually going to work. They give a lot of information on this, but I'm going to make it really, really simple. So as far as open combat missions, though, there is one objective. Your goal for that mission is to complete that objective. It's in a very large area. You can use things like parachutes and ascenders to make your way around the map. You can be stealthy. And when enemies are alerted, you kind of have like that five star rating system that GTA has a similar thing to that where the more threat, the more people and enemies and tanks and things like that will come that you will have to deal with. So it's easier to do these missions stealthily, um, but you can complete them any way you want. You're going to start out with the gear that they give you, which is going to be a very base set of gear, and then you can loot gear throughout the mission. After you complete the mission, everything that you looted, you are able to choose in a loadout the next time you play that campaign. So the more you play it, the more things that you loot, easier the mission is going to be in the long run the next time you play it. In other words, you can up the difficulty and then play that mission again. The one other thing that they state is that open combat missions require the best of the best. In each mission, you will deploy as a designated member of Task Force 141, Farah, Ghost, Gaz, Soap, and Price. In other words, there are going to be five open combat missions throughout the campaign, and each of them you're going to play as a different member of Task Force 141. I do find it interesting that as they list the members, none of them are Alex or Alejandro. So we don't know if those characters are actually in the game yet, but what I will say is they aren't listed in those open combat missions. Now, so that's essentially where the blog post ends, but I'm going to keep going because I feel as though there are some more things that you probably should know before you play the campaign. And essentially what I'm going to do is go over all of the major characters and let you know where their story left off at the end of the Modern Warfare 2 story. And a lot of them are kind of similar. For example, we have 
Captain Price, Farah Karim, and Alex, who all ended their story off at the end of Modern Warfare 2 in the raid. They were going after Hadir. He had the nuclear warhead. And by the very end, Hadir warns all of them about the real Russians, aka Vladimir Makarov. Speaking of which, as far as Makarov goes, we were warned about him at the very end of Modern Warfare 2. We also kind of got warned about the no Russian, the passengers on the airplane, that kind of thing at the end of the campaign as well. But the interesting thing about this is when they showed us this, every single member of Task Force 141 knew who Makarov was. Speaking of which, this little cutscene that we have here was the last time that Ghost was seen since the end of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. But we do know a little bit more about Makarov because they did put out a trailer where we see him behind bars. He is in a prison, and we do know that in the very first mission of the campaign, Operation 627, we have a group of PMCs breaking into a prison. Are they going after Makarov inside the prison? Are they trying to free him? Or is this something else altogether? We won't know until the campaign is actually out. But we do know at one point he was behind bars and every member of Task Force 141 already knew who Makarov was. As far as Alejandro and Valeria, Alejandro, for everything that we know, is still chasing after Valeria, trying to track her down. Last we heard, she was going to Almazra, but hey, they're still fighting. We don't know if they're going to be involved in this Modern Warfare 3 story or not, but what we do know is that they're still going after each other. Another character that we have is Gaz. He is kind of Captain Price's right-hand man, his underling. And as far as he goes, he finishes off his story once again at the raid. He didn't go in and finish off Hadir like the rest of Task Force 141 did, but he meets up with them when they are taking away that nuclear warhead at the very end of the story. There's two more characters that you probably want to know about, and one of them kind of finishes off their story in a bar, and that is Soap McTavish, also a member of Task Force 141. We know he is one of the people who will be a part of those open combat missions. But as far as Soap goes, he was kind of left off in this bar, once again recognizing Vladimir Makarov. But that's not the only thing that they talked about in the bar. The other person that you may be wondering about is General Shepard. Now, we don't know much about General Shepard. In this cutscene, we find out that he is, of course, in the wind. We don't know where he went. However, in that final little battle that we saw on El Mazra as Vladimir Makarov's Coney Ultranationalists are going in to steal some gas weapons, we hear some voice recordings from General Shepard, so we know that he is still indeed working with Shadow Company. Speaking of which, another character you may be wondering about is Commander Philip Graves. We saw him brought in at the very end of the story of Modern Warfare 2 in the final season there, and in this, we know that he is once again working alongside Alex and Farah and moved in alongside Task Force 141 to fight against the Coney Ultranationalists in El Mazra. And as far as what the Coney Ultranationalists were doing at the very end, they moved in disguised as Shadow Company operatives and managed to end up stealing the gas away from Task Force 141 and Shadow Company, and it is now in their hands. And that is where we are left off with the Modern Warfare story moving into Modern Warfare 3. So I think that's it. I tried to make that as quick and painless as possible. However, if you do want a much more deeper dive into the full story of the Modern Warfare universe before you jump into Modern Warfare 3, I do have that story summary. I think it's like 42 minutes long. It's very in-depth and covers everything you need to know about the Modern Warfare universe before you play this campaign. But now you know where all the characters are left off going into Modern Warfare 3, so you can kind of have a better idea as to what to expect moving forward. So I hope this helped you out. I hope you're ready for the campaign. Stay tuned to the channel tomorrow. I'm very excited to be streaming that with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed, have notifications on. If you enjoyed the video, found it informative, always appreciative if you hit that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on, all of that jazz. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are